Mom, you actually started with one zebu. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. That's a fact. A That's fact. a real fact. Mm. Mm -hmm. One. Yeah. And today we have all this. Mm -hmm. I think for me what was fascinating was the mattress part. Mm. Seeing cows sleeping in mattress, walking in mat, everything. What's the essence of that? Just like the way you love comfort. Yes. The cow also wants comfort. So the mattress becomes very hardy because remember these are zero grazed. Yes. You want to bring them as close as possible to a natural environment, mm. although it's not possible, mm. but you want to give them a comfort to that mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. The idea of chicken, because mm. I've never been in a room with so many eights, there are so many. Mm. I was so fascinated. <laughs> and it's so clean, it's so neat. The ventilation is, there's just so, a lot of neatness in mm. how you do things. Mm. But walk me through the idea of chicken. When you find the feeds for the cows have gone high, and the cows are not maybe able to pay for what the feeds you are, mm. you are trying to, mm. to give them, mm. then you look for something else to substitute for where the deficit is coming mm. in. So that's how the, the, yes. the poultry part came mm. in. You have maize, right? Iso ni mahindi. Iso mahindi ni ngombe zitarudi zikule. Yes, zikule. How much land do you use for the maize? Right now we are on uh, whatever we have planted for animals yes. is about eight acres. Eighty acres. Yeah. Eight zero eight acres. Zero, yeah. But in different in different acres. places. Yeah, small one is there with so many acres, the yes. other that way. But yeah. in total we have about eight. Yes. Which we have grown mm. uh, sorghum fodder mm. and maize. In any business, if you are going to start a business. Do not look forward to getting rich tomorrow. It's a wrong journey. You are not going to go up with a lift. Yeah. Use the staircase a step at a time. Mm. It's tiring, but it's worth the journey. Don't take a staircase, I mean a lift, because your screen ya inaitangwa pule ya ya nini iki iki katika ata kama uko hard in the floor utakuja na the same speed. Take the staircase. There's no way the staircase will bomoka at the same time. It can, you can only get tired and sit and try and get some more energy to continue climbing to the next level. Don't trust the process. One day your life is gonna change. Keep on believing. You will be better than before. So trust the process. Hello, good morning guys and welcome to today's incredible episode of Inspire Global. Let me tell you something, I've spent the better part of my day in a farm. And you know we always make a joke when someone says, I started with one zebu or I started with uh, one chicken. People go out there and say, even me, I started with one egg, I started with one feather, I started with... But I'm telling you, and it's okay for us to laugh about it, but what if I told you actually... Uh, today's guest, she actually started, and her family started this farm with one zebu. Today, I was just looking and I'm like, one cow produces how many liters? Over 30, I think close to 40 liters, but she will correct me if I'm wrong. Nimeona ngombe zinalalia mattress. Guys, I've seen so many chicken. I've never seen so many chicken in my entire life. I saw how eggs were being collected. I saw how we had the yogurt. We went to their grill shop and I'm like, how much more can someone and do but i'm telling you guys the discipline with this woman i've spent since we are filming this around 7 uh, p.m but we've been here from three and we've just been walking around the farm we've just been taking our time na hakuna saamesema, ah, nataka kupumzika. she's just been there with us and i want her to inspire you guys with her story and i really wanted to dedicate uh, this episode to a sponsor that is running with us right now a campaign 
campaign we are running, but I said, today's episode is powered by you, the LNN community. This is for you. You have been so incredible. And from whatever we learn from today's conversation, please do not give up on your dream. Start with that one thing. Start with that one egg, one chicken, one whatever that people say, but please do not give up. I want you to sit relax it's going to be a very inspirational story so stacky maneno mob let me let our guest introduce herself and take us through how she actually started with one zebu to having so many animals so many things going on in her life and what does it take to produce such quality so mom karibu sana how are you doing i'm fine thank you Rin. and how, how are you feeling i'm i'm good oh, Good. I'm good. I'm Even, good. Thanks. I, <laughs> normally people don't ask how I'm doing. <laughs> so I am I am I am happy. Thank you. Today Thank you. I am really happy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Maybe before we go deeper, mom, start by introducing yourself. Uh, my name is Anne. Yes. Wakine yeah. Mwangi. Yeah. A wife, a mother, and a grandmother. Yes. And a director of Mebe Daily Farm. Yeah. You are two directors. Yes. Yes. You are two directors. I and yes. my husband. Yeah, and your husband is so supportive. Very supportive. He's sitting at the back of this guy's filming and he's just watching. Look at him smiling. <laughs> If it's not this, I don't want it. He's just looking at you. You are blushing, mom. <laughs> Mama, you're blushing. No, I'm fine. I'm very much fine. You, you are fine. I'm very much yes. fine. Yes. Thank you for inviting us. Yes. I know this is the last process, mm. and we've had quite a day in your farm, mm. and it's beautiful. But Thank you. we made a joke, and we were like, Mom, you actually started with one Zebu. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. That's a fact. A That's fact. a real fact. Mm. Mm -hmm. One. Yeah. And today we have all this. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? It feel, makes me feel great, but not I personally mm. as feeling great. Mm. Because the first thing I always say is God's work. Yes. It's not in man's hands mm. on it. And uh, due to God's glory, mm. and we give praise to him, yes. we have been able to come this far. Yeah. And uh, as a family, they are, I'm sur surrounded by many members of the family yeah. who keep on supporting yes. and telling me, go on, go on, it's yeah. doable. Even when you think it's uh, too much, mm. then you feel some spirits telling you, no, 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 we are not yet there. Yeah. Keep pushing, keep, keep pushing. pushing. And that gives you a lot of energy. Yes. So I would say we thank God mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. But I also always say I thank you, all the members of my family, for whichever part they have yes. prayed in either, you know, words of support and yeah. encouragement. Yeah. And to my dear husband, yeah, for all the support yes. I have received from him yeah. for the years I've been on this. Yes. Yeah. I will, journey. yeah, we've been also working with your son. Mm. That's Evans, right? Yeah. Mm. He is your last born. Yes. But God, I saw him putting in so much work. Mm -hmm. Even me, I was like, God, this is so inspirational. Yeah. Are you mentoring them? Is it what would you say you believe in a family business? Mm -hmm. And would you actually say your kids are hardworking? Because sometimes you look at life and you're like, my parents have everything. Why do I have to work hard, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But him, he's running up and down. Down, up and down, up and down. Mm -hmm. Where do they get that from? I think uh, I would I would say much is much of what we as parents have done. Mm -hmm. Again, it's God's work, mm -hmm. but still we cannot uh, neglect our responsibility as uh, responsibilities as parents mm -hmm. to be able to mentor our children to what you'd like them to be. Yeah. And this does not start when the child is 18 years, because many of us maybe wait for when it's too late. Mm -hmm. But you start as early as when that child appreciates that there is a life yes. and uh, that drive starts when she appreciates that she'll ask for food mm. and you start mentoring them that one day is going to come and i will not be there how will you be there without me mm. and with that you are able to walk each and every step without them becoming little like dependents like people who are i call them uh, people who are helpless hopeless yes. but many times the parents do make that deliberate mistake mm. maybe knowingly or not knowing mm. uh, but we have taught the children that whatever they they found yes. as part of our possession is not something we received from anybody we worked hard for it and we would like them to push it to the next level they are lucky they will not start, start from where we started mm. because we started from the lowest 
and we have come up to where we are yeah. and we believe they have a better position to pick from where we are to mm. have even better ground mm. and their gratitude will even move to a better level. Yeah. That is our, our, our motto. That and that's motto. why we would not like to be like we are hanging on on what we are doing. Mm. We would like to pass over the baton mm. to the next generation. Yes. yes. And it's good that you've mentioned something important. You started from scratch. Yes. Take us through your journey. And even because I know this is the story the audience are waiting for. Mm -hmm. How did you start until you know you got to a point that you are here? Mm -hmm. But guys, I want to get right to that before we do. What does Meved mean? Mevet has its own strange name, yes. and many people keep on asking that one. But uh, not not even the members of the family didn't know what yeah. it actually <laughs> means. Yes, really. <laughs> and I've told them I'll tell them one day what yeah. it means. For now, I will keep it as Mevet. Yes, does it? Yes, yes. Even them, they don't know. They don't know. But does Dad know? No, it's you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes. Is it special though? It is special to me. It's me. It's and I believe special. it is special to the family. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, we yeah. respect that yeah. until you are ready to tell them yes. what it means, it us means. included. Yes. But mom, take us through the scratch, you know, starting from scratch to getting to this point. Uh, yeah. Maybe give us a bit of brief about you also mm -hmm. growing mm -hmm. up. Uh, mm -hmm. Getting to starting now with one Zebu mm -hmm. to this point where we are right now. Hey, my story is... Is quite long. Yes. I hope you have the time. We got time. <laughs> okay. Um, I was born in the late 50s, yeah. to be specific, in 1958. Yeah. That tells you my age. And um, I schooled in a primary school in the rural area. Yeah. My parents were peasants. And uh, I'm the firstborn in a, a chain of nine, nine. nine children. But I always make fun of it because I tell people I'm a very, I was a very precious baby to my parents who gave birth to me after 10 years of waiting as a firstborn. So now you can see how special mm -hmm. I was. Yes. And to my mother, this was a big pride that up to now, she knows not only the date I was born or the year, she even knows the time and day of my day, mm -hmm. of my birth. And uh, after that, I went to school. I went to primary school. I went to high school. And... Uh, Later on, I went to do my diploma course in nursing, mm -hmm. which uh, was in KMTC. It was the only KMTC in Kenya. Yeah. That is the main campus in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And when I graduated in 1982, I joined uh, PGH Nyeri. Yeah. And in Nyeri, I was given the first trial of my life. And I think these are some of the things which have made me to be who I am. Because I graduated and on arrival in Nyeri, I found when they were opening a department, which was totally new in, the, in PGH Nyeri. Mm -hmm. And because I think everybody else had uh, declined to be the head of the department, young as I was, I was given the responsibility of to learn the dental department. I was the, I was the first nursing officer to learn the dental department. And for reasons which I will not talk here, why people were feeling that department, but I was able to cope with that. Mm. And it is within that time I met a patient. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is within that time I met a patient, yeah. and uh, who happened also to be part of the PGH uh, family yes. as a staff. Yeah. And uh, this is the person who later, after some time, later became my husband, okay. Mwangi. Okay. So that's the whole journey. Ah, mom, and come on. Where do you want us to? <laughs> <laughs> ah, mom, you will not do that to us. So you met a patient. Yes. So he came in as a Okay, we won't go deeper. Yes. But please, can you tell us how he won your heart? Like, uh, what made him, you know, stand out mm. until you decided, ah, this is a good try for me? <laughs> I'm not really sure about that. Some things you cannot be able to tell the gritty little details. Yes. But all I remember is uh, he was my patient for some time because he had he had a teeth problem. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and I was in charge. So anytime he needed uh, anybody who wanted assistance, needed yes. questions, was always referred to go to the nursing of in charge. Mm -hmm. So he kept on being referred to me. And once in a while, he's in my office. What can we do for you? And, and then uh, after some time, we started now talking mm -hmm. in sort of not now like uh, okay patient yes 
nurse relationship. Then yeah. after that, his teeth were okay, uh -huh. and he moved out of the clinic. Yes. But he kept on coming to visit me. Okay. Yeah. And uh, one time he asked, can, can we go for a cup of tea? Mm. And the cup of tea was in a, in a small kiosk mm. where there was a... I don't know whether it was supposed to be burger, which you call, these days you call burger what it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But it was a mandazi. Mandazi has been put in. What is our burger now? <laughs> that is the burger you take these days. Okay. Anyway, then uh, this as it went on. Yeah. In uh, 18, 1985, mm. we opted to become one yeah. as a couple. Yeah. And uh, as we were there, we got our first child. Mm -hmm. uh, and what happened after that is uh, he was transferred from Nyeri yeah. and came to Nairobi. Yes. I was left in Nyeri. But at the same time, I also had applied for my, master, for my diploma yeah. in midwifery. Yeah. So I came to join him yeah. in Nairobi. Okay. So we are the two of us now in Nairobi. Yeah. And that's the time we were able to get the other children. Yeah. And in 1986, just mm. before we left uh, Nyeri, we bought a lad. Mm. We, we, had, we had passion for farming. So we bought a lad. That was the first asset we ever owned. Mm. And um, we bought a lad somewhere in Kiani. Mm -hmm. And it was a five-acre mm. plot. Mm -hmm which was uh, five acres for 60,000. That is 12,000 per, yeah. per, per acre. Yeah, but we could not even lose the money. Ah. So, but the Mze who was selling the lad to us was so kind, he accepted to take 48,000. Yes. We, were, we could not raise the other 12,000, but he said, this is a very young couple. Yeah. It's like, they're like my children. Mm. So let them go with the 12,000, yes. but they let them tell us how long it will take them to lose the 12,000. Mm. So we finally agreed with him that you'll be paying 3,000 mm. every three months. So we had four insta mm. installments to do mm. to complete the 12,000. Mm. We finished. Mm. So by the time we are moving from Nyeri to Nairobi, yeah. we already had this piece of land. Can I ask you something? Because yes. even the person selling to you is saying, yes. this is a young couple, mm. What is it in your mind that brings you together to a point where you think we can invest together? Mm -hmm. Why was that part important for the both of you? Because usually when you're a young couple, let's go live in a flat, in an apartment, let's rent, let's do A, B, C, D. You guys, you are so young and you're thinking about investment already. I, I think one of the things is that uh, in, in uh, the rule of mm. investing on a flat, it was nowhere. Yes. It was not going to appear. Mm. So many people in the rural will invest in land. in land. Then I had a passion for farming. I was brought up by my parents, I said, were a person. So yes. I was brought up in a farm where we used to grow coffee, mm. grow maize and all that. So I was used to the uh, farm work. And um, to me, it was okay. Yeah. If you have a fa yes. farm, yeah. you're good to go. Then my husband, as he tells me, was brought up in a, te in a teacher's compound yeah. because the mother was a teacher. Mm. So for him, he has already always had the, uh, you know, the wish that I wish we had Rad so that I can become a farmer. Mm. I can have the fun of being on the farm. Mm. So when we met, the two of us had something in common. Okay. And that's how the idea of the farm came, came in. Came about. So we bought the farm, mm -hmm. not a flat. So it reached a point in the year 1999 or around, not 99, around 1998, yes. we thought of, uh, we need to get another piece of land so that we can get somewhere to settle mm. and near Nairobi. Mm. And that's when we started looking for land. If I say the truth, this land was, we got it accidentally. It was not by choice. Because mm. we are looking for land somewhere towards the upper side of Kenya, which is more green, more rain, looking beautiful. This place was too dry. Remember, this is Mwea. It was so dry. But what happened is uh, we had a piece of land uh, which was, sold, was being sold to us somewhere mm -hmm. on the upper side. Mm -hmm. But when we were all almost going to the next level yes. of our agreement, mm -hmm. we noticed the lad had a case which had taken uh, 40 years in court. Mm -hmm. And we were told now the lad, we cannot take it much as we wanted the lad. So the Mze who had introduced us to the person who was the owner of this lad, mm. that was somewhere near Barisho, mm. now told us, okay, don't get so disappointed. I have another place um, 
if you if you want to take a you know this opportunity maybe is a good thing to do mm. it is in this and this place and we said that place is so dry how will we survive there but we said now we are determined to get a piece of land for our own uh, and the one we have in Kenya is too far so in 1999 early 1999 mm. he brought us to this farm it was a three acre plot the owner had four, so he was going to dispose three acres and give us one acre, mm. and be left with one acre. Mm. <sighs> so we did that, but again, it turned up to have its own issues. Again, uh, issues of uh, the lad that the Todia is lost, uh, and, you know, he gives a lot of stories. Mm. But uh, at the end of it, after going through a court process, we are able to get the lad in the year 2000. What was amazing after all that struggle, uh, most of our relatives who came to know this where we are got a piece of land in this world, did you look all over Kenya and the only place you could get red is land is in Mwea, or four places. And actually, for about a year we could look at this place and wonder how did we come here? Why did we have to buy this land? But uh, today we, we see it was a blessing in yeah. this case. Yeah. So in 2000, when we were given the title deed, we started the first farming. Mm. Like every other Kenyan Kikuyu, of course, we we'll start with maize. We planted maize. The maize germinated. Then the rain went off. Mm. Where, there used to be no rain in mm. those days. Mm. So it was so discouraging. Then came in the next crop, we planted again. Went a little bit up. We were able to harvest. A three acre plot, we only have a, have a set, I think, half a bag because it, there were three bags, but we, with cobs. Yes. So, about half a bag of the three acres. It was like what you saw this. We have no house here, so that time we are coming. Mm -hmm. We are using people to do the farm work for yes. us on a daily basis. We come all the way from mm -hmm. Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So, that's the life we have gone through. Mm -hmm. But coming now to why the animal, the animal part came yes. in after all that, mm. this was in 2007. Mm. Because like I told you, I went to Kenyatta, I did my diploma in midwifery. I finished. I continued working in Kenyatta and mm. I worked in Kenyatta for 17 good years. Mm. But uh, during that time, I went back to the university, did a degree in psychology. And uh, after that, what was to happen is... Uh, I opted to leave Kenyatta National Hospital and joined mm. what you'd call, I don't know, NGO world. Mm. So I worked with the Americans for about six years, mm. almost seven years. Mm. But uh, what happened in 2007 was a turning point for us as a family. Because 2007, I was, uh, before 2007, I was still working with the Americans and I had projects which were running. I was running a project in South Africa, Risutu, mm. mm. and Iswazirat. I had another one, which I used to go to Ghana. And uh, in Kenya, I was in Western, and another one was in Eastern, and now Central Province mm -hmm. in Nyeri. Because I was basically dealing with maternal health mm -hmm. and newborn issues mm -hmm. in a research organization. Mm -hmm. So when uh, 2007 came, I was, uh, I was on the project in Western, and I was to break off to come and do the voting for the 207. Mm. So we did the 14, but I, after that, when the chaos came, I couldn't go back. But uh, after what happened in 208, uh, we all came back here as a family. Now the children. Mm, that time you had built a house here? That, yeah, the small wooden the house. Yes, we had oh. built that house. There was no Kenya power. So we are using a solar, solar system. There's still a solar panel mm. on top of that. Mm. And uh, that time when we were seated outside is uh, the time that time before 207 we had a cow one a zebu cow why had we put it there we had put it there because we had already employed somebody on the farm for purposes of when you come there's somebody taking care of uh, a chicken umeacha and the compound so when we came <laughs> we noticed now the problem we have in Mazua because this place had no source of milk. So you wake up in the morning and you have come with all the children because you have learned up away from the kills yes, in the Nairobi. Violence. The violence in Nairobi, you have come but you have no milk mm. to cook tea. So if we need a milk, we have to travel all the way to Chumi, which was I think in Karatina that time, 
or the other part of the other side of mm. Kirinyaga. Mm. And I even remember the date. It was on 31st, I think that 1st of December of that 2007, we were seated under the mango tree outside the small wooden house. And we asked ourselves, and a friend came to visit us. And as we are seated there, I, my husband, and the friend, we asked ourselves, there's no milk in this place. This place, my inti tunakuza, is not even becoming of any purpose to us mm. because you, you can hardly harvest mm. anything. And we're sitting on a gold mine. Why can't we think of doing something like putting up cows? This zeb here gives us uh, about a liter in the morning, a half in the evening. It is for the person who looks after the farm. So, but I think we can do better than this. So that's the time we decided to get um, another cow, which was now a hybrid. Mm. The other one we call it, the first one we called it 025. This one we bought, I was even reminding my husband the other day, where we, no, yesterday evening, where we got it mm. from with his baby. Mm. That cow, we bought it at 22,000, a whole cow. But because it had uh, this calf, which was about a month old, yes. the owner said, if you want to carry the calf, give me 1,000, you carry even the calf. So we came with it. So we had now, two, we had the zebu, yes. we had this uh, hybrid. in between, not hybrid, in between, in between, uh, a crossbreed between a zebu yes. and a hybrid. Yeah. And a calf. And a calf. We stayed. Now, as we were there, we said, yeah. now, if this is the situation, and the, the milk we were getting from this cow, which has come with a calf, we were getting, I think, about around uh, seven liters at the end of the day. The question is, where are we going to take seven liters? So what we did is we started, a uh, neighbor started asking us, you people have a cow, can you sell milk to us? So you could wake up in the morning and you find a, a child outside the door. With a bottle. With a bottle. Nimeabuana mama unyuzie maziwa. So we started that way. Then before all the kills were down yes. and uh, everything was to go back to normal mm. and we go back to mm -hmm. our places of work, what happened is we agreed, I think we need to put uh, some animals. Mm -hmm. So we arranged to get some animals and we got six of them, now hybrid, Frisian, from Kenya. Mm -hmm. And they came here in July 2008. So in another three months, we are there with milk. Now the question is, you have 20 liters, then 30, then 40, 50, you can deal with it because you still have people coming with the bottles until the day the milk became 150 liters. I don't know whether to say it foolish or naivety. What we did is to think of the way or we can, we are still working, yes. the way we can get to buy a cooler. So whatever milk is extra, they put in a cooler. So we bought a cooler, 500 liters cooler. So to come here, ile itabaki munaika kwa cooler. But you see, you, you keep putting it today, tomorrow, see itaja. Mm -hmm. So one day we are called and we are told the cooler is full. So, but before we reach here, we pass through one or two processors, don't have to say their names, and we told them we have 500 liters of fresh milk. Kaidre, can you take it from us? Mm. And unfortunately, we are informed that you only sell milk to some of these processors if you are a member, mm. which we were not, if you are a registered member. Mm. So within that struggle, by the time we reached here, the full tank of 500 liters of milk was spoiled. Wow. By that time, we were take, making, we wanted to come and give it to the children. Good, just go with it mm. to a school, mm. distribute it to mm. the children. We don't even need it to be yes. paid. But when we came to check on it, it was already spoiled. Mm. That is when the idea of value addition started now making sense to us. Value addition. Value addition. That's the time it started making sense to us. Mm. But meanwhile, we were able to sell the milk for about six months yeah. to one of the main processors mm. in the country. Mm -hmm. So, but with time, as we continued, we started thinking, well done. And that's the way now, the whole, the project we are seeing now has moved from one level to the another, next. to another. Uh, yeah, we have had quite a number of cows. Mm. I will assure you, and uh, this is a fact, the number of cows you have met are not even the number of cows you'd have met if you were here a year ago. Mm. The highest number we had was 172 animals, yes. which now have reduced to 120, I think to 122. Mm -hmm. This is all inclusive. Mm -hmm. 
And why did we reduce them? Is because of the two years drought has hit every farmer in their own way. And for us, all the stock we had for two years were depleted when this drought hit. Mm. So, and we knew if we continue keeping them, one of the things is that the food we had in the south will not sustain. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, but mm -hmm. when we moved the cows, mm. we sat as a family mm. and we agreed we are not going to leave the cow barns empty. So we have infilled the, we have filled the gaps with the chicken. That's yes. why you have the poultry. Yes. Currently, we are, our capacity is at 10,000 chicken pot uh, layers. Mm. And uh, we also keep a few broilers, mm. meaning for outlets, yeah. not for sale. Yeah. Only the outlets we have at the main kit. Yes. And another two. Wait, how many trays of eggs do you get per day? We collect 250 trays per day. Unfortunately, not even a single egg ever stays in the store at the end of the day. Oh, yeah. That's fortunate. We thank God. So, see, baby, my eye. Akuna. I'm a cotton like Aisha. That is good news. Mm. That's fortunately. Thank you. We thank God. Mm. Mm. So, oh, the idea of chicken. Mm. Because I've never been in a room with so many eggs. There are so many. Mm. I was so fascinated. <laughs> and it's so clean. It's so neat. The ventilation is... There's just so, a lot of neatness in mm. how you do things. Mm. But walk me through the idea of chicken. The idea of chicken, I would say, also started long before the cows. Mm. If I may go back. Because that time we were trying to do farming, we also had chicken. Mm. Where our house is today used to be um, a place for laying chicken, but they were all kienyeji. Mm. We never used to have the, these other chicken. Mm. All kienyeji. We had about 300 mm -hmm. of them. Mm. And people knew us for that. So at any given time, we have always had chicken. Until now, recently, that is in 20, I think 20... 19, yes. the first uh, lot of cage chicken, because our chicken, you notice they're in cages, yeah. is when we had the first 500 chicken in cages, mm. whereby Mr. Monk went to a show crowd and they were talked to about uh, the cage chicken. Yes. And he came with a, he bought a cage, some cages which could accommodate 500. So we started the first lot with 500. Mm. And with those 500, we learned how to now to keep pottery mm. uh, in a small house. Yes. So how did pottery come in? We are looking at the, what, is, what is kicking at any given time in, in this sector of agriculture. Because it has mm. its own challenges. So one of them is when you find the feeds for the cows have gone high, and the cows are not maybe able to pay for what the feeds you are, mm. you are trying to, mm. to give them, mm. then you look for something else to substitute for where the deficit is coming mm. in. So that's how the, the, yes. the poultry part came mm. in. So and like now when we reduce the cows, the poultry came to fill up yes. the part where the, yeah. the, the, the cows yeah. have left. Yeah. you got to be smart. Yeah. Someone mm. has to be smart in the farming uh, business. Yeah. Farming is hard. Mm. It's, it's not easy. Yeah. You need to keep your your mind like a like you know like a clock face. Mm. You know you always on ta 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 ta. What's mm. next? What's next? Yeah. Huh? Mm. Yeah. You keep mentioning about the feed when the feed becomes expensive. Mm -hmm. But now let's talk about the feed you're growing for your cows. You know, at first I was like, um, you have maize, right? Is only mahindi. Is only mahindi. Is all ngombe zitarudi zikule. How much land do you use for the maize? Right now, we are on uh, whatever we have planted for animals yes. is about eight acres. Eighty acres. Yeah. Eight zero eight acres. Eight zero. Yeah. But in different in different acres. places. Yeah, small one is there with so many acres. Yes. Know that way. Yeah. But in total, we have about eight. Yes. Which we have grown mm. uh, sorghum fodder mm. and maize yes. for silage. Yeah, I've also noticed they don't cool a heavy heavy. They when they were cool a vizuri, even <laughs> when they were cool mm. siaga, you were explaining. Could you walk me through the whole feeding process? Mm -hmm. What do you feed your cow, and what inspired that? The whole let me plant, let me give them value. What um, what inspired that? 
The beauty of it is when you go into an area, mm. you really do a lot of research of what is expected mm -hmm. and what is the correct thing to do. Yes. And uh, other than literature, you also learn from other people. You go to experience, you get to share with other people who mm. are farmers. Mm. Personally, I've visited quite a number of farms yes. with, with, them, with my husband, mm. trying to understand what other people are doing in this particular country, as far as daily farming mm. is concerned. I have traveled to Israel, so I have an idea how people do farming in those developed countries. I've been attached on a farm in uh, Netherlands through SNV. What you learn as you go through these experiences, you try as much as possible to get what mm -hmm. is uh, you can domesticate. You mm -hmm. can't take everything from some of these countries because they are so high mm -hmm. and um, very sophisticated for us. But you can pick one or two things of what they are doing mm -hmm. and try and domesticate it to your level. Yes. That's what we have learned. Mm -hmm. So as uh, we went on learning and also our phones have become a dictionary, they have become our encyclopedia. Pedia. They have become everything to yes. us. So you have a challenge and just go to them Google. and you are, Google and, you and Google your becomes answers. your friend. Yes. And you get the answers, mm. filter what you can use, yeah. leave what you can't use. Yeah. And everything goes from one level to the next level. Yes. There isn't anything we haven't done other than growing food for ourselves. We have also made food, the daily meal. We have made, you saw machines, we have made daily meal for ourselves, for this farm. Yes, I think for me what was fascinating was the mattress part. Mm. Seeing cows sleeping in mattress, walking in mat, everything. Hey, the VIP section we went to, where you have your VIP. What does that do? What's the essence of that? Uh, there, there, we always say there are three aspects to having a, uh, a good daily cow. Uh -huh. And one of them is the cow comfort. Just like the way you love comfort. Yes. The cow also wants comfort. So the mattress becomes very hardy because remember these are zero grazed. Yes. You want to bring them as close as possible to a natural environment, mm. although it's not possible, mm. but you want to give them a comfort that mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. So you see, when they step on the concrete yes. plane, yeah. what happens is their hooves get spoiled mm. because they are being eaten up by the, yeah. the concrete. Yeah. So that becomes necessary that you give them that comfort. So we, we decided to put uh, that uh, so-called mattress mm. so that they don't have their hooves getting. Mm. Because you, at the end of it, it, just, it still costs you a lot because these hooves keeps on getting uh, either worn out, then infected, then the cow is on uh, drugs, you buy the drugs, you throw away the milk because you can't sell milk, which is already oh, having mm, drugs, mm. and so forth and so on. So why don't you try and see how you can do it? Yes. In fact, they are not the only. Those are not the beast of comfort. The yes. beast of comfort are the ones which are lying on rice husks. Hey. You remember them? The ones which you are lying where there is yes. open yes. open space yes. and there is husks. Yes, rice husks all over. Yeah. those ones are very comfortable hey. because they sleep like uh, open. You don't have restriction of where you are going to sleep. Yeah. Sleep anyhow. You can face this. You can face this way. Yeah. It's okay. Yes, but the ones you are talking about the mattress, they have a structured way yes. of, yeah. So it's basically for the mm. comfort of the cow. Yeah. that is one aspect or one aspect of uh, making you know your daily farm yes. be what you yeah. like it to be. Then uh, the, other, the other one is the feeding. So what do you feed them on? You have already talked about the fees. Yes. And the fees, we are talking about silage. We do maize and sorghum silage. Mm. And other than that, we have the daily meal, which we add. Yes. And uh, from there, we go to other things like bomber rods here. Hey. Yeah, the, you saw it there. Yes. We also put, uh, we also add it. We mm. have a grass called uh, the bracaria. Yeah. And now we are having a... Uh, a nepia, yeah. which many people are calling the super nepia mm. or the hybrid nepia, which is an imported breed. Mm. We are made to understand is a cross breed of a nepia and I don't know a sorghum and mm. all that. Mm -hmm. And the, that aspects of our, uh, of our daily cow management is the breed. Which breed are you using? Mm. Yeah, when you are selecting your breed, yes. you, you look for a breed mm. which you go well with your mm. animals. And now that I'm talking about how we breed our cows, we breed the cows, we inseminate our cows on the farm. The person who does the insemination is one of our staff. So we have a trained person to mm. do insemination mm. and the manager of the livestock se section. Mm -hmm. And uh, we select the semen we want used on our animals. Mm. 
and uh, how you select the semen to be used on the animals is dependent on um, what you want to collect. Mm -hmm. For example, you don't just go and pick uh, a seed. You go, I have a car, what is a, is a production as per now, maybe 30, 30 liters. So I can go and pick uh, another one to breed it, which also produces 30 liters. Mm. I would improve that breed. Mm. So I'll be looking for one which wow. produces how many? 40. 40. So, so that when now it gives a curve, mm. it will be producing, it is 30 plus 40, that is? 70. 75 by 2? Oh, 35. 35. Yeah. So now I'll be promoting the daughter to produce 35. Yes. Mm. Then the other aspects you look for when you are selecting mm -hmm. is uh, what is, how does the, <coughs> well, how does mm. the under look like? How yes. are the teeth placed? How, yeah. do they, how, how What is the length of yes. the teeth? What is the length of the mm. cow you're going to give, to give? How are the legs? All this coming to. Wow. To so, play. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Hey to be able to get what you really want yeah. for your animals. Yes. Mm -hmm. Your work makes you happy. I am. I'm not complaining. <laughs> I am. <laughs> You're I not am. complaining. I'm not complaining. Yes. I see a lot of people talk about how the bill, the electricity bill, to you what has been your experience and is that what inspired you to have the solar panels? Is, is electricity too expensive? I know the obvious answer, yeah, but to a farmer, how does that hinder you from, you know, expanding? Uh, the issue of electricity, not even now when it has gone up, because we didn't put the solar this yes, year. Yes. And we didn't start thinking about putting up the solar system this year. We started in 2018. But we are not able to put up. We, have to, we went round and round until in 2021. 2021 mm. is when we now decided now we have to put solar. Mm. And uh, solar, the one you have seen, was uh, fitted in April last year, mm -hmm. 2022. Mm. Uh, I keep on telling people, and it's not a joke, if there is anything which is going to make many people close their businesses, Mavid included, is the cost of learning business with the electricity bills we are getting. Mavid pays a good amount of money to Kenya Power. Can I ask how much? If you want, I will tell you even the actual figure for this month. Mm. We paid uh, 768,000. And uh, that is, we have uh, 30% have been paid through solar because solar contributes to about 30% of our electricity bill. And uh, now we pay 768. That tells you if without solar, maybe it could have been a million, One million. a million plus. That's the sort of uh, power we are talking about. And if anybody can do anything for manufacturers, uh, processors, or anybody in this country is to reduce the cost of energy. Yeah. And in particular, electricity. The electricity. Mm -hmm. It's just too much. That's a lot. It's too much. You, 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 sometimes you do the mathematics, you are left wondering, how, what, am, I suppo am, I how am I supposed to balance this? Wow, that's an, and how, what's your staff number? Our payroll is 72. So you have 72. We have 72 staff on the payroll, but on a daily basis, because of some of the glutenity things which need to be yes. done on the farm, yeah. we have about 10. Yeah. Because of the, basically because of the farms yes. where the feeds are mm. going. Mm. Yeah. You can put on an average, every day we have 10. Every day. Yeah. Cashes. Then you gotta pay them, yeah. pay electricity, yeah. make your profit. Yeah. It's crazy. No, me, I would close. <laughs> I don't think a lot of people would even have that energy. I think it's, it's not easy. It's not you easy. are very right. It's not easy, but uh, as a family, what keeps us continue sometimes is twofold. One, this country is struggling with employment. Yes. So I don't know whether this is our donation to the nation. I'm not sure. But we feel we have a responsibility to create a job in the, rurals, in the rural areas as Kenyans and uh, reduce, because we can't stop, reduce the rural mm -hmm. to urban migration. Mm -hmm. If we can be able to achieve that mm -hmm. as a country, there will be less people in the city yes. 
who are struggling with joblessness because mm. they are jobs in the rural. Mm. That is one. And the other is we also want, we feel we have a responsibility as Kenyans and as a family to give Kenyans quality in the rural. Mm. Interesting enough, with us we thought we are giving quality to the population in the rural. But our our main consumers of our, the main yes. consumers of our products are actually from the urban. Yes, I was gonna ask that, you know, we, we, where we were, a group just came and you could tell these people are from a different place and they really were going crazy on the products, you know, for the yogurts, for everything that you're giving out. What makes your product stand out? I remember we, off camera we were talking about, because I had your strawberry yogurt, mm. which is really good, but I hear Mala is what people are crazy about. Mm. I want to go try that. Personally, I had the strawberry yogurt, right? And it was really good. It's so itamu, sile utamu imechochwa, but this is not, ma'am, nita kutumia invoice, EC marketing or whatever, so <laughs> but sile utamu imechochwa, nile utamu straightforward. Mm. You are having quality. You can feel it. Mm. Why? W what is it you are doing with it? Or is it a trade secret mm. that makes your products stand out? Because look at me. Where I'm from, I'm from Nairobi. But I have been requesting you for this interview for such a long time, you know? And I was like, I have to understand Understand the quality aspect. What makes your product stand out? What are you doing different? Okay, I'll start by saying this. You are not the only, the only one who has said that. Yeah. And, and even to bring it uh, closer to you, yeah. we have customers who drive all the way from Nairobi over the weekend specifically to come and pick milk, yogurt, mara from Method. All the way from Nairobi, how many supermarkets are on that highway? How many farms are on that highway? So many. But somebody will come all the way from Nairobi yes. with the family. I've come to pick me up. Yeah. Okay? But what makes our product start out? I remember my husband was making a joke earlier yes. that uh, there is a time they had said, let's join the full market. Yes. The, the market. Yeah. And uh, this is business. And uh, we are here to do business, not to do, you know, yes. what what is what, what is yeah. what. And I said, I'm okay if you can do business, but I will not be part of that. I'm pulling I'm, I'm ready, out. I'm, I will be ready he to said, pull out. I'm pu he said his words. <laughs> she said, I'm going to pull out. Mm. Hapo wali to chapa nine nil. Uh, yes. Yeah, that yes, was, those yes. were his words. Yes. yes. And... Um, uh, to be fair to you is just to tell you I have that's why I started with giving you my yeah. my background yeah. my profession my profession for over 21 years because I left my job in 2009 that's when I, I decided not to renew my contract in it more after we talked with my husband yes. and we agreed this farm cannot be run by employees only yes. so I stepped out of my employment and I came to run the farm initially. Then after that, uh, uh, two of our children joined in. Yes. So now I'm, I'm actually easing off. Yeah. Uh, my daughter and my son yeah. are with me on the farm yes. and with a very supportive, a lot of support from their father, mm. which we always are very, very grateful. Mm -hmm. And he never fails to come to the farm, even if it means an hour to be on the farm wow. and not be in Nairobi. Okay. But what makes our product start out is that aspect of health. People who value health, one, and I hope you saw our our, our statement there. Yes. Our motto. Yes. Farm fresh. Farm for better. Fresh for better health. Yes, for better living. For better living. For yeah. better living. Mm. We are so passionate about what we give people. And for me, as our medical professional, is I'm so particular because I always keep on telling people if you can you can do anything, anything mm. regardless of the cost to get away from swallowing a tablet because you are sick. Please do it. And uh, there are some of the things we know they are also aggravating illness. Cancers have been associated with many things and among the things we take. So if you can be able to get some of those things out of your way, if you can be able, if you are in business, to get those things which you know are harmful to the human being, 
please don't put them in their food. So what we do is our milk is always fresh because it's milked on the farm. Mm. We buy a few from a few farmers mm. uh, surrounding us, and these are farmers we trained wow. and got, got them to get interested with the dairy farming. Wow. And their biggest trouble, problem was if we put up a cow, where will you sell the milk? Mm. We said we'll be there to pick the mm. milk and buy the milk wow. at a competitive price. Yeah. And what we do is that milk on a daily basis, mm. you know, you have a, you saw you have a plant, mm. is once it's collected, nothing is removed from it. Straight to the processing. And when it is processed into yogurt or mazuwalala, nothing is added into it. Not even a preservative. A little bit of sugar. But we rely mainly on the sugar which is naturally in the milk. Mm. The whole cream, if you are those people who don't like uh, milk, which is full milk, yes. then you will not be our customer. Mm. Because you say, you have put all, mm. the whole cream is here. Mm. Yes. Mm. But the alternative is you don't want to take the cream, but you, you take an, another more unhealthy product, which has got cornstarch. Cornstarch. Mm. Cornstarch, and then a lot of sugar. So that keeps us thriving. Mm. When we tell you we are tell, uh, selling what we think is the best, uh, I always say, I don't think there is anybody else who is doing what we are doing mm. when it comes to production of yeah. these products. Yeah. yeah. When you eat our chicken, our chicken is uh, grown on the farm and prepared on the farm. So we, we take care of it from one day out until it reaches the age of slaughter, yes. and we prepare it to what you have eaten, either beef burger. For beef burger, we have the we have our small bulls, yes. and like many farmers who dispose their bull calves, we don't. We keep them, they become your future. Nyama. Nyama. For burger, burger. For, yeah, for your beef yes. burger. You know, you made me laugh, not laugh, but I was like, so even when you're slaughtering a bull now, like the big ones, mm. people are on the waiting list. Yes. Yes, for when our nyama because, because when we slaughter for, yeah. our, for our burger, big yes. burgers, then we have the others, which, which, which parts of the cow which cannot be bent into. Yeah. Yeah, so we take the stick. Then after that, we have the others, which we have people yeah. who are waiting for this. Yes. So anytime we slaughter, we know this one is already gone. Wow. Whatever is there is already gone. It's already gone. Yes. Hey, yeah. then people trust your product. They do. And that makes they you do. happy. They do. That yes. makes us very yeah. happy. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned something else, mm. the um, urban to rural mm. migration, mm. right? Mm. And that's not something that is happening a lot. Mm. I don't know. People fear these kind of jobs, the farming, the livestock, whatever, all those things. And we were just saying we are so concentrated in places like Nairobi, yet our farms what observations have you made and what advice would you give to Kenyans? Uh, you know, one of the reasons why these countries, and let me see not only Kenya, the African continent as a whole, is suffering from uh, food insecurity. It's not because we don't have rad. We have enough rad. And let's, let's, let's not try ourselves that it's because we don't have rain. We have enough rain. The problem we are having is I think we have all uh, come to the opinion that best life is in the, city, in the city, okay? So who has been left to deal with the farms? Mm -hmm. The elderly and the school dropouts, unfortunately. And of course the school dropout doesn't have the capacity to do farming because farming is expensive, it needs a lot of resources, you need a lot of capital. And so when you leave it to the elderly and the people who dropped out from school, you have left the lad basically unattended mm. to. So, and uh, many of us decided to go to Nairobi, which was good because we went to make our lives better. Mm. And uh, I keep on saying, I wish that the way we went to those cities to make money, we would be able to prowl back to the community. Because remember, Ling, we like it or hate it. We left the ruler, we went to the urban. Where is our destination? Mm. Back to the ruler. So if we do not take care of the ruler, the ruler will never take care of us. Now, what is 
disappointing is that many people don't want to come and invest in the rural. But I thank God whoever came with the idea of devolution because we have seen something trickling back to the rural through devolution. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of opportunities in the rural. If only more people can take the risk of investing in the, in the rural. Mm. So that if I'm producing milk, somebody else is producing chicken, okay? What do we do in the two? We make this country food secure and we offer jobs mm. to the young mm. men and women. And therefore, we curtail mm. the movement from the rural mm. to the urban setting. The urban. Because we're just overcrowding the, mm. let's say, Nairobi the city. Mm. We're just overcrowding Nairobi. Mm. But those young men and women, they are spending the better part of their life walking up and down looking for jobs. Mm. Jobs which are not really available. Yes, yes. Yeah. I've seen that you've also taken in quite a lot of young people. Yeah. How are how are they behaving towards working in Uku? How is their mindset? One, uh, I hope, I don't know whether you noticed that in the farm we have a representation of Kenya. Yes. All different <laughs> tribes are <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. I noticed. Akuda mutu hayuko. But we have everybody mm. on the farm. And uh, we need to work on the mindset of the young people. Because many a times is when you are recruiting mm. and somebody is so interested, mm. and a job. I'm really looking desperately for a job. But immediately you say the job is not in Nairobi. The next question, where is the job? Then you say, oh, we are somewhere in Kirinyaka County, somewhere between Sagana and Makutano. Where is that again? Then they ask, what did you say? Somewhere, eh, have you ever, did you, do you know Sagana? No, or the, uh, they will even tell you, yeah, I know Sagana. I even come from Nyeri, so I passed through Sagana many a times. Do you know a place called Mevet? Yes, Mahalia Maziwa, they call it Mahalia Maziwa, mm. the place of milk. Once you do that interview, mm. the next minute you call that person, Simwa Likuzimi, Awa Likublok. Ah. Because the place is not enticing mm. for them. Mm. So that's the problem we are having. So to get the, the type of personnel you would like is different mm. from Nairobi. Mm. That is Nairobi. And I really respect the people who come to work for us or work with us as a family. Mm. We all call ourselves the, family, the method family. Mm. Because it takes a lot of will mm. to appreciate that you are going to work. Mm. In the, especially when you are young. Mm. And uh, I remember one of your young tags told me is Nairobi is suited for our age because there is social yes. capital. Then I said, oh, none of us was born in Nairobi. So we went to Nairobi and created the social capital. Yes. So why can't you back, come back to the rural and create social capital in the rural? Because we create social capital. You can be in that Nairobi and be isolated. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can be in this rural and you are a part and parcel of everybody. Yes. As we walk with you in the farm, did you notice I and Mr. Monkey walk in the farm like equals yes. to our staff? Yes. We go chatting with them. And you know all of them by names, which was really beautiful. I know all of them know? by two names. Not just the first name. All of them. Wow. All of them, close to 80. Mm. I know all of them by name. Mm. And each one's station where mm. they work. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yeah. But you see, that environment is so healthy. Yes. Let's have a later moment because mm. you guys have been married for how long right now? Close to 40. Close to 40 years. Mm. What still makes it beautiful? Marriage is supposed to be beautiful. Oh, yes. It's supposed to be what did God create? Because whatever God created, he sat back and said, it's good. Mm. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. What makes anybody think when he created the marriage, institution which 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 was the which is the oldest yes. institution on earth what makes you think he looked at it and said this is somehow beautiful or not beautiful you are the ones who people are coming with this yes. but it's supposed to be beautiful yeah yeah it's us who are making it the other way yes. and you know why it's because people want to be divine just the way we are rebelling against everything else, mm. people have decided to rebel, even mm. what God has brought mm. in. Mm. 
naturally. Mm. And that's why people will turn to all sorts of things which yeah. don't make sense. Tell me which child would like to grow without a mother. Would you like to grow without a mother? Who would like to grow without a father? Who ch which child would like to grow and be told you don't have a grandfather, you don't have a grandmother? God made marriage to be beautiful. But we are the ones which, who are giving it another mm. description. Mm. Wherever it came from, I mm. don't know. Mm. But may God help us. We have survived it for those years. And brief, we are going to survive it Amen. for so many mm. more years. Mm. Because I think we took an oath of until death. Us. Uh, and because of only two things. Mm. I, I, I only submit two things. Mm. And I say, love is not one of them. No. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's not. I don't, I, 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 I always say I have not been able to define love, but I don't think um, it's, one of them. it's one of them. But one of them is respect for each other. If I respect you, I will never do something which I know is disrespectful to you. And vice versa. Okay, because a love, we are so many. You can, love is you can divide it into so many many things. Love for what? Love for what? Love for. What? But if I respect you, I will never do anything that disrespects you, and vice versa. Wow. Okay, mm -hmm. that is number one. Number two is uh, what we call genuine communication. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm shifting Kidogo, but I've always wanted to ask this question to anyone that I come across mm. that has a beautiful and truthful marriage. Mm. And the question I would want to ask, I know guys, this is more of LNS than inspire the question, but to you as a woman, what does submission look like? And to your husband, what does leadership look like? Let me ask, let me not, uh, <laughs> let me not answer for him. Yes. Let me say some mission. Yes. I think women have been, uh, have been uh, misled by the word submission means like being stepped on. Mm. But enslaved. It, enslaved. But even when God created Adam and Eve, his instructions were very clear. Adam, these are your responsibilities if these are your responsibilities, okay? If each one of us would keep to their line, mm. do you know you have, no, you have no line of conflict? Keep to what, God was very clear. Mm. Keep to what is yours. Can I, if I give you an example, and this is a, a true example. Uh, do you know I've driven a car since 1996. I've been a driver for those years, since 1996. Do you know I can't change a tire? Since you, and I'm not, I'm, and not that I learned so many things, but I'm not going to learn. So because, uh, and uh, I always used to tell my husband, you know, me, I did a very difficult job, which many have not managed to do. And I, or they, are not, they were not lucky to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. I did a very difficult job. To look for somebody in the name of a husband and stay with this person as my husband. And I continue taking his responsibilities. When you came, I, well, before you came, I used to change my bulbs in my house. That time I had not met you. But immediately he came. I tell me I can't take a stool, step on a stool to change a bulb. Mutu wa nikianguka, nikute ni meanguka. Maya akianguka. Akianguka ni mwana ume. Ajifake. Because, ata yeye, nikimkuta kitchen, nakipika, namuliza, ukishomeke ya kitchen. Mutu wakuta inashomeka, ukipika, utasama ulikuwa nafanya nini kitchen. Kila mutu wa bebe mzigo yake. So we wezi utaka kumuona kitchen. Akifanya nini? Hey. Hey. <laughs> Akifanya nini? Na wewe na yeye change bulbs. Eh? 
And I mean, eh, I, in, I'm mm. very serious. Mm. I don't know how to change that, and I'm not going to learn how to change mm. one. No, I'm mm. not. I think if we all took to what we are we supposed to do, our rules. yes. But I think one of the things uh, women have uh, decided to do is to take other people's role, pretending they are fighting equality. Mm. Equality. Mm. Yeah. I think what we should have is some, another word, not equal, because even God didn't make us equal in many ways. Oh. He didn't make us equal. Mm. Yeah, but let's have, keep to your line. The other person keeps to their line. Okay. Yeah, to close the chapter on what keeps you, yes. is we have never, and I hope you never, asked each other, pesa ya hii na hii ilienda wa, because hakuna pesa ya mutu. Everybody, every money is our money. And it is that respect I talked about that he believes there is no way I can, I am managing to his account. Mm. Even at him, I can go account. Mm. Yake. Mm. There is no way he expects me to go and move money from his account to do what as a family we have not agreed upon. Mm. He is a secondary to my account whatever is there. So because I believe there is no way he can take my money, what is my money or our money now, our money to go and use it in a, yes, something yes, yes. which is not going to benefit the family. Mm. And may God forbid that it would happen mm. so. So because money has become another thorny issue. And uh, it's because if one is earning more than the other, thinks the other one is, is inferior. Is inferior. And uh, sometimes you also look at, uh, also quantify what somebody does. If only looking at what somebody brings in form of cash. Quantify. Quantify mm. each and everything mm. the other person is doing mm. and how much it contributes mm. to the family, mm. for the wear of the family. And you see, you are all striving to one one thing. Yes. Make this family better mm. than you started mm. it. Mm. Make your generation better mm. than what you mm. you found, mm. which were your parents, yeah. and you hope the children will continue. Will continue. For us, mm. we want to have a a business which will be like just to use a if not a bad example, mm. the Indian way. Mm. That Indian's business do not die with every generation. How we wish our this method will not die with one or two generations, mm. but it will be for generations and generations and to generations come. to come. That's your legacy. That's, a, yeah. that's the legacy you yeah, want to leave the behind. You want to leave yeah, behind. yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. God, I admire you. Thank you. You are powerhouse. Thank you. No, you are. I've spent quite the better part of my day with you. And even right now, you still have the strength to speak to me. <laughs> Where else you are such a busy woman, you would have decided, Lin, kuja, paraka, raka, now go back. <laughs> so I, I acknowledge that that's really beautiful. And thank, thank you. you for that. Huh? But mom, before I wind up, mm -hmm. for anyone in business, mm -hmm. this cause now we have to like, com we have to bring it together, business and family. What are some of the three key tips that you would give our people? in running business. Yes. The three key things might not be the very key to everybody. Yeah. But for us, like I've said, the three key things is whatever you do, do it with intrinsic passion, not that which is driven by money. Because we always say yeah. uh, riches or wealth is a product mm. of service to humanity. Mm. Okay? So when you, when you serve humanity, God rewards you. And that's what you, yeah. you say, she's doing very well in business, mm. he's doing very well in business, mm. they are so blessed, mm -hmm. they are, you know, that's it. Mm. The other thing is, like I said, be genuine in whatever you do. Business people have been accused, and it's so unfortunate, of uh, learning businesses which, and especially in the food industry, producing what you do not like to consume, and you not even like your children to consume, mm. but you are giving it to other people to consume. 
you you plant vegetables today yes. vegeta uh, tomatoes today mm. you spray them the day after tomorrow mm. Mm. you sell them the following day to people what are you doing poisoning mm. i only put a word of caution when when you have those vegetables or potatoes or nyanyas and you take them to the market mm. you have sold to the other people but you, you are going to eat from somewhere else because you you go and get uh, what you think is mm. of good quality and product mm. but what you have sold in that community is what you eat tomorrow in a hotel so you are still eating your poison uliweka poison ukifikia ni wengine lakini you are adding up there you have relatives who who buy those potatoes who buy those tomatoes those vegetables your children your grandchildren you never know who who will be the next consumer so you are poisoning your own thinking you are you are poisoning other people and it's all because of greed of money i know money many people say is everything but i think one thing i am very sure in my mind money is not happiness no no live a life that even when you live this world because none of us is here permanently people will say they lived somebody here wow. who was you can you could have counted mm. on her or him mm. could not have done mm. anything mm. which she thought mm. was not good for her mm. to anybody else mm. and that alone is enough it's enough, it's enough. Mm. my parting shot is in any business if you are going to start a business do not look forward to getting rich tomorrow is a wrong journey you are not going to go up with a lift yeah. use the staircase a step at a time mm. it's tiring but it's worth the journey don't take a staircase i mean a lift because your screen ya inaitangwa pole hii ya nini ikikatika hata kama uko hard in the floor utakuja na the same speed take the staircase there's no way the staircase will bomoka at the same time it can you can only get tired and sit and try and get some energy to continue climbing to the next level na ukianza kushuka utashuka na the same same speed but things before you reach the ground floor because you have been walking on the stair things might turn mm. positive and you mm. start going back mm. again but do not lift yes sure. yes do not look for instant mm. instant gratification yes mm. yes yes that is facing that is putting yourself in what we call we call um you know uh short time pressure mm, mm. and then it doesn't last mm. yeah. yeah it just ends in pain yes. so even when you are doing business less be fear there is a, a statement i was given about three months ago by somewhere where i go for some of our supplies mm. i'm windy mm. and i was really lamenting and the price reduce <coughs> the price for me mm. just me mama are you the first line and founder of this business mm-hmm. i said yeah two of us me and my husband and he told me that's where your problem is ask me i'm from the indian community and i know and the problem you have is you are founder no business founder ever ever sees the fruits of the business because you initiate you become the founder so uh, during your time you be actually inputting capital that's exactly what we are doing with my husband you put you put you put you put you put invest 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 so by the time now the business is most likely starting to like a maroons because here we bought the land mm. we bought the equipment mm. we built the houses you mm. see all that is money we are inputting 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 by the time you start putting uh, getting to see a little bit of fruit it's not you who is there now mm. it's your children wow so what you should be playing is that your children 
get interested with what you are doing because they are the ones who are going to do the first sio kidogo mm. sio mingi kidogo mm. of the harvest wow. the people who are going to benefit mm. now properly are from your grandchildren period so your grandchildren are the ones who will reap from what mm. you sought for and i said if that's it so be, so be it. it yes never had something so profound no founder Ever. Yeah. yeah. Ever. Mm. Ah. Yeah. That hits different yes. now. <laughs> Just do what you can. Do what you and can. And do it diligently. Yes. That was so beautiful. Karim. One of the most beautiful interviews I've ever had. And I feel like we need another sit down sometime in the future so that we can talk about <laughs> different other topics apart from, you know, farming and our world is hurting. Our people are hurting. Yes. and sometimes they just need a voice of reason yeah. an unjudgmental voice of reason that's what they need but other than that i know they will want to buy some of these products this is not an ad but i had it and the yogurt for me was amazing but dad said mala is where utamu is yes. mm. so i'm going to i'll text you about it and tell you what i feel mm. honestly about mala but for the people who would want to just come pass by Sagana Kujeni you can give them the directions they can also have burgers the grill is awesome <laughs> that's some beautiful job done there but for the people who would want to connect and maybe get some of your product how can they contact you thank you mm. the the grill part of it yes i want to own up and say courtesy of being with the young generation yeah when they came we were all analog everything was analog they yes. came and uh, even the logo was changed yeah. to look more beautiful yes. more attractive yeah. more digital yes and uh, mean the person who have been on it is yeah. uh, Moreo himself yes. he designs he does all the branding yeah beautiful uh, and we thank god for yeah. his uh, yeah. for his participation yes on the farm yeah uh Many people, when you yes. say Mavid, they think it's a very big company. Yeah. And I'm not saying we are not big. We are a big company. We are, we are big in our own yes. way. Until they find it's not the, that big company like multi-million yes. or multi-billion yeah. company. But we are worthy our name. Yes. We are proud of what we do and who we are. Yeah. And we are proud of our, all our customers and staff for the great mm. great great job mm. our customers have been very very supportive mm. every part of mevet incremental is done with the do I say consultation with yes. the customers because yes. when you find us doing baking bread is because they requested why do you sell us milk without bread without bread and milk is for tea mm. and tea is supposed to be taken with, with bread with some bread yes and why do you why do you tell us to stop on the road side just to take a glass of milk or take yogurt yes. which we used to have before yeah. why don't you open something where i have when i come with children they can have some meal they can take you know just something mm. and go so mm. we have the stopover which yes. people pick and yeah. go a few will sit down and take their chips and chicken mm. and burger the mm. one you are talking about yeah. we are on the narobi yeah near the highway yeah between sagana and makutano yeah exactly four kilometers yes from the junction to embu yes it took <coughs> yes. me four minutes yes to get here yes. sorry sorry mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's where we are yes wapite hapo yes yes we have contacts you can call um, and mm -hmm. and you'll be told about maybe yes. yes we have um a line yes. in the office that is zero seven zero eight yeah eight hundred yeah seven hundred okay and then you can also use my line yes 0722 yeah. 83 9366 okay i'll be putting the numbers also on the screen so that they can be <coughs> able to contact mm. and also thank you for just having us around we've had fun 
we've been challenged. Thank you. My people, as you can see, we got to wind up. So asante ni sana for tuning in Water Show. I don't know what other questions that you have, but you can put them on the comment section. And maybe if you want me to sit down again with mom, we can have another conversation. But just let me know on the comment section. And of course, if you want to just consult and talk and ask about them, the contact details are right here on the screen. I hope you guys have been inspired. I hope you've been motivated. I hope now you can actually start with a one egg. And then once be a shot on a one egg, don't be ashamed about anything here. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So let me know what your thoughts are. And of course, a polite reminder. We are going to God. We are God has been faithful. Yeah. To our people in the UK, see you at the end of July. For Kenyan friends in the park, here we come in the UK. And you all know now we are going to Dubai with Bountiful Safaris on the 24th to 28th of August. So, guys, you can and start registering and I hope we have beautiful moments together so don't forget about those two those are the ones that are confirmed UK and Dubai so for the people in the UK you can start sharing your stories this is our email here info at lnn.digital and for the guys who want to go with us me and Kagoni Dubai Bountiful Safaris our contact details are right here here on the screen and to say thank you to my team for making this happen I don't do it alone so Muga, Skola, Joshua, Asante Nisana, and to our amazing editors, Kelvin and Sam, for compiling this episode and making sure it reaches you guys right on time. Please feel free to suggest to me someone else I can interview on this segment. I want it to be super inspirational for you guys, and I want us to chase our dreams no matter what. Let's change the narrative. Kujeni tulime mashambani, like just come, kujeni tulime. You can see the beautiful things that go around when you decide to take a risk but as she said which one are you choosing the stairs are at the lift the speed is what we have to consider and think about so me acheni ni rudi nairobi it's been real my people till tomorrow 10 a.m yeah to onani kesho 10 a.m bye so trust the process one day your life is gonna change keep on believing